Elliot, thanks so much for joining us today. We'd love to hear your perspective on a few things. Based on the experience we had last month with the Educause Learning Lab, understanding and improving your student experience, a couple of questions for you. First question, can you summarize your approach to understanding and improving the student experience? Yeah, absolutely. I think if you're trying to understand and improve the student experience, first you have to define it. So in the course and in general, I always start by talking about it's the way that students interact and how they feel with those interactions. And that might be with, uh, with technology, with a professor, with a staff member, with the community, with the space, with the service, uh, with a course. Um, and, uh, and so how they're, how they're feeling about that is the thing you want to understand and, and improve. And so we use uh, a variety of different methods, you know, surveys, interviews, focus groups, data mining, uh, to understand those interactions, what you might call touch points, and how they progress over time. Are they getting better? Are they getting worse? What are the high points? What are the low points? Uh, and uh, and then what you need to do is work together to understand and improve them. So it's working with different offices, and then as you come up with opportunities to improve, instead of kind of like huge changes and big risks and lots of resistance. It's really about prototyping and piloting and building momentum and scaling your success. And I, I, I think one example of that, um, we worked with Portland State University years ago to understand the experience of online adult learners. And um, it was quite interesting that they, you know, they came in, Portland State is majority transfer. So most students come in with a patchwork of experience. Many don't even know, hey, am I a sophomore or am I a junior? You know, that let alone like progress to degree. So what they really needed was some interactive way of seeing where they are, meet, meeting them where they are uh, along their academic journey, and then giving them real-time recommendations and advice uh, as they as they progress. And that was one of a series of interventions from the Office of Student Success that uh, increased retention, uh, retention, I think several, three or four, three or four percentage points. Um, so that was a, a great example of understanding and improving the student experience, researching the needs, identifying the pain point, collaborating on a solution, testing it out, and then scaling it up. I can tell you've put a lot of work time, energy, and effort into how do you understand the student experience? Maybe a little bit more related to this showcase series. What are common challenges or hurdles that institutions face today in meeting students where they are? Well, I'm, I guess, broadly speaking, you have two sets of challenges, right? Before before they enroll. So there's, there's so much work that has to go into um, outreach, and identification and uh, not only like making the case for your college, but now now you need to like make the case for college because half the country thinks it's a bad bet. So in terms of meeting students where they are, first they have to, you know, they have to understand and find interest and feel included and be excited about, uh, about higher ed. And then what, you know, once they're enrolled, they meet a whole series of challenges, a lot of which has to do with good intentions. But uh, effectively, what 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 happens in higher ed is it things get added, new programs, new services, new centers, new technology, and that creates a lot of complexity. Often, students are asking for things and saying, "I wish you know the university had this," but it, it's actually something they actually have; they just didn't know about or. Uh, it might be offered in a way where they don't feel comfortable using it. You know, you have it normalized getting help. Um, they don't want to go to their writing center because they think that's, you know, for remedial English, but actually, you know, A students go to the writing center to hone their, hone their thesis. Um, so it might be that things are complicated. It might be that they don't know about it. It might be that they don't feel comfortable using it. Um, and it might be the way you're delivering it, you know, um, I don't know anybody that wants to like go to an office between nine and five to sign a paper-based form. Um, it, you know, it might, it might be the, you know, the cultural competence or the lived experience of your staff where, uh, they can't relate to the students or students can't relate to them. So there's a variety of different ways where we need to 
meet students where they are, understand their needs, meet those needs. Um, and I think do it in a way that isn't about like deficit minded thinking, like first gen students know, don't know what office hours are, or don't know that R means Thursday, you know, it's using a strength based approach and saying like first gen students are super resilient and like independent and like, look at all the stuff they've figured out on their own and they can figure this out too, with like a little bit of, a little bit of help. Um, one example of meeting students where they are, like we do a lot of work on library transformation and it's really about thinking through how a library can be a hub for creativity and student success uh, because students are working on projects. You know, they're not just writing papers. They're doing real world projects for companies and community groups. They need a place to come together. They need a variety of services to support those projects, you know, writing, data analysis, creating a prototype, making a presentation. And um, we help transform the library at Temple University, the Charles Library, into this kind of hub so that, you know, you can get help uh, at the Student Success Center, you know, tutoring, writing, makerspace, digital and physical making, making a video, making a presentation, and really kind of like shifting the emphasis of the library from stacks to study and support. You have developed a really great way of understanding student needs meeting students where they are, and improving the student experience. How do you help higher ed professionals apply this approach to improving the student experience in their local context? Um, you don't put your customers first, you put your staff first, uh, and then they take care of your customers. Um, and I think the, the first thing you need to do is meet your staff where they are um, and figure out how to, how to help them you know, what are the roles they play? What are the, what's the structure that connects those roles? What are the processes they use to deliver their work? Um, what's holding it, holding them back? You know, what are the pain points? What are the highlights? Um, and, uh, and so you're kind of like working the problem from both, from both directions. And I think once you understand the staff needs, you understand the student needs, then you can do some opportunity mapping and prioritization. You know, it, it can be as simple as, um, importance and urgency, you know, in a two by two grid and mapping out the different needs or projects on post-it notes or on a mural board, um, and then prioritizing those and, um, and implementing them and checking in, checking in along the way. I, I think one example of this, um, we did a project, a student experience project for Metro State here in Minneapolis. And one of the interesting findings was this kind of Two, two related findings, actually. Students weren't always clear on their career path, you know, how a course might co connect to a career. And then the alumni weren't engaged as, as they would like to be. And so one of the things that we uh, proposed and then was, was implemented was an, an initiative called Careers in the Classroom. And it was one of these rare cases where you can make like one plus one equal 11 in higher ed, where Basically, they brought in alumni to be uh, guest speakers and panelists and, and get alumni more involved in classes. And then students can see the connection between what they're doing and how it might lead to a career. They can talk to a role model, a mentor. They can learn from their path. Maybe they like meet their future self. And, um, and then alumni are more engaged and they feel more connected to the institution. And they're not just, you know, hearing from the institution to solicit a donation, but actually learn from their, you know, their personal and professional experience. So a real, you know, a win, win, win.